Aloha, it's Jacob Pompeo. I wanted to share with you all a story <clears throat> on how I found Buddy here. Uh, about 10 roughly years ago, give or take a couple years there, I was out in the suburbs of Florida driving around with my friends at the time who I think we were piled like probably two cars full of people and we were just driving around being hooligans being teenage kids and we found this little guy running around and we thought this is strange looking dog to not have a collar on him and to be running around the streets at this time Let's see if we can find his owner. So we drove around, tried to find his owner. And I wanted nothing to do with him. I thought to myself, my mother would kill me if I brought this dog home. And I remember he was going around, getting affection from everybody in the vehicle at the time. And then he ended up coming around to me, being on my lap. And I tried to push him off me. And I was like, go on, buddy. Uh, I said, move, buddy, Some, something of that nature. And that was how he ended up getting his name. I never technically named him. I just called him, hey, or buddy. <laughs> and so uh, I guess buddy is more appropriate than hey for a name. So that stuck. And I brought him home because when we put him out of the car, finally, we gave up looking for his house, looking for anything that he seemed to recognize or anyone looking for him. <clears throat> we put him down back where we found him and drove several miles up the road and waited about 10, 15 minutes and said, we'll go check on him, see what he does, see where he goes. Maybe he'll go to a house somewhere and we can knock on the door but instead 15 minutes later here comes buddy running down the street and he jumps straight onto my car door and everyone's heart melted of course when they saw him on the hill coming down the road they're like that can't be him no way it's him why would he follow us he just met us the poor guy so i took him home Gave him a bath. Unfortunately, he needed four baths back to back. I was so tired after the third bath, I had to ask my friend at the time to help me with giving him that final bath because he was covered in so many fleas and so many ticks. Um, I think he had like one or two ticks. He was covered in fleas. Just a morbid amount of fleas uh, were coming off of him. And we finally ended up getting him pretty clean after four baths. And I had to go to work the next day. So I lock him up in my room. Hope my mother doesn't notice that there's a dog there. And of course, as soon as I get to work, he must have made some sort of a noise because she's calling me, freaking out. And... Oh man, living at my mom's house at the time was quite an experience, but she, of course, told me to get rid of him and put him back where I found him. We got into an argument about it, and um, I said in the argument, fine, I'll put him back where I found him. I opened up the front door, and he just ran outside into the suburbs, and Eventually, my mom starts freaking out. She's like, he's going to get hit by a car. Bring him back. Take him to the shelter or something. I was like, okay. Just remember, like, you said to put him back where I found him. I found him in the street. And so I opened up. This is after maybe hiding the dog for a couple days or a week at best. And <laughs> I opened up the front door. And I just called Buddy. She say, buddy, come on, buddy. And sure enough, the stray dog that I just randomly 
gave a name to comes running down the road and right back into the house. And I thought to myself, oh boy. <laughs> oh, I'm in for it. Several years later, still with me. It's been very worth it keeping him around. He's taught me quite a lot about myself and he's defended me from bears, moose, or elk. Probably both. Different times, actually. And chased off deer, chased off foxes from the chicken coop, an ermine from the chicken coop. Um, <laughs> so many things. He helped me chase off crows that were attacking our camp. Actually, they were magpies. Attacked one of my camps once. A whole flock of them scared off my goats, scared off the chickens. They were eating all the food. It was horrible. My goat came running a mile down the road, just bawling his head off. Like, bah! Like, all the way down the street. <laughs> Somehow he knew where I was. Because I was at work. And, uh, sure enough, there was just a s flood of magpie. I'm not sure what the appropriate name of the flock of magpie would be, but... But Buddy helped me chase them all out and keep them away. He's he's a good dog. He's very street smart. I don't know what he's been through, but when I found him on the street, he was three years old, roughly. They said, when I took him to the pound, my mom eventually came around and said, if I took him to the pound and had him cleaned up and fixed and all of that, then, uh, then I could keep him. And I had to pay to get him back, of course. However, uh, he had a lot of problems. He needed a lot of medications. And at the time, that was a great option. I didn't want him fixed, but apparently when you turn in a stray, they fix him regardless of what you want. So, poor guy was fixed. And now he's recovering from his surgery. He's been doing pretty good. He had a chunk of his jaw taken out, like a little square chunk right there, sawed off of his mouth, poor guy. And all of his teeth here are gone. He's got two fangs there, and two of the fangs coming down, but all of his you know, top teeth are mostly there. <laughs> mostly. Old man. He's doing well. That's most of the story of Buddy. I hope you all enjoyed it, and check out pci.farm, where Buddy has helped inspire me to uh, make this charity, where we're helping orphans around the world find food security, and education, and, and entertainment. Until next time, aloha.